Welcome to Sapphire Now, where today we're talking about how NTT and SAP can help organizations build connected supply chains. I'm David Rowan. I'm the founding editor-in-chief of Wired magazine in the UK, and I wrote a book about innovation. And I'm going to lead a 15-minute conversation with three experts. It's a real international group of specialists today. We're going to be talking about Internet of Things in manufacturing, everything from tracking and tracing of supply chains to connected cars. And we're here to explain how NTT and SAP um, in their close working strategic alliance are going to give you some advice on making the most of the opportunities ahead when everybody and everything and every customer is being tracked. First of all, we go to Spain to welcome Roman Sical, who is at Everest head of supply chain innovation, doing a lot of work in understanding how best to track goods and shipments. We go to Germany, to Wolfgang Muller, SAP architect at NTT Data Business Solutions, who's a specialist in the Internet of Things and manufacturing. And then we go over to Austin, Texas in the United States to meet Nadia Madmad, who's senior VP at NTT in the global CTO office. Um, we're going to be talking in particular about how the latest technologies can help organizations like yours on the journey to create connected supply chains and what that means when you've got 5G, you've got cloud, no longer being ideas of the future, but becoming must-haves in incorporating your business model of today. Disruptive business is coming. This is how to stay ahead. So I want to invite firstly Wolfgang to come and tell us. Um, I would like to welcome Wolfgang, Roma and Nadine to come and share their expertise. Thanks the three of you for joining us. Um, I want to start by 5G. We hear a lot about it. It's apparently going to change how we all work. It's going to change everything from entertainment to um, the way we learn about the news. But what does it mean for organizations? Wolfgang in particular, how is 5G going to affect the supply chain? Yeah, thanks, David. Yeah, 5G, as you know, is and it said, is really a driver of network and businesses now. Um, we, we have the chance to use the capacity, the low latency, the re uh, reliability of these networks to secure our supply chain. And when you look at companies, they have an increasing demand of uh, supply chain automation. Uh, this caused by increased customized expectations, pressure on cost and time, requirements for product and safety, and you know these COVID discussions about cold chain and how to handle vaccines. So it means full transparency in the network. And this not only within the company, but also outside the company. And this is 5G can support us very well. And uh, we as entity, we are currently co um, collaborating with SAP about optimized pro um, processes around connected products and connected sites using 5G as a platform. And uh, when you look at, for example, customers like automotive suppliers, they're acting worldwide. They are in a network, they are depending on their OEMs. And so when you look, they are delivering from components to final assembly and 5G helps them to optimize their production, to connect their sites, to optimize all the processes around. So when you look, these are embedded in a 5PL, in let's say 3PL warehouses, ports and harbors to ship, ship to the customer. And when you see that 5G help us, that they are, for example, the vehicles, the AGVs, the target trains in production are connected. They know exactly where the products are. The machine are talking with each other. And when you look outside the company, we have the full visibility on the, on the supply chain and even the support for productive maintenance and for production control with lots of and tons of IoT data is supported in the best way with uh, 5G support. You mentioned Wolfgang connected sites. What do you mean by that for manufacturing locations? What is 5G going to mean? Yeah, the connected sites is not just only the factory. It could be also logistics hub. Uh, like you can imagine, I spoke about these three PL warehouses. It's harbors, it's ports. Yeah, so when you, when you look, we need to have a stream, the, well, the customers expect streamling, streamlined productions. So all the world around the world in the network. So we have products like digital manufacturing cloud, manufacturing towers 
to control these processes. 5G helps us. Yeah? So we have all these operations are connected to each other. 5G helps us. Yeah? Also in, in, in maintenance, yeah? maintenance along these processes. And we will come to that talking about logistics and connected products. 5G helps us to be visible, to be fast, quick, and have the right answers with tons of data. So we've got real-time information coming from the places goods are manufactured, um, but it extends to the full supply chain and also where the products are reaching the customers. And um, let me bring in Romain, what do you understand by this idea of connected products? Yeah, thank you, David. Well, Volkan just spoke about um, where products are being produced and transit through, um, such as factories or logistic hubs, which are the connected sites. However, if we target an end-to-end -end connected supply chain, uh, we need to ensure that we keep a full um, visibility and constant one in between those checkpoints. When we talk about um, connected products, we basically refer to embedding all the information technologies available in the most micro piece of the overall value chain, which is uh, the product itself and its actual movement through the business journey in the supply chain, right? Um, we talk about enabling real visibility, traceability, and interoperability into the supply chain that guarantee um, sort of a digital passport of each individual item being moved. We believe that product-centric companies have everything to gain in building platform around real-time monitoring of uh, transportation conditions. I'd say one of the biggest challenges that we face when we set this goal is obviously to deal with the with a highly, highly fragmented uh, ecosystem of stakeholders, multiplicity of processes, solutions, system, you might need to actually retrieve um, the overall information of one single product. Connected products necessarily go through building bridges instead of walls, and we think the actual collaboration and data sharing process for the sake of customer growing expectations. Besides uniting the supply chain ecosystem, connected product also refers to the huge need of adapting the current static company systems to dynamic ones, uh, fed by a constant flow of data that will require flexible and efficient operation processes. Having said that, I think it's important to mention that we've came to a turning point where most people will agree it's great for companies to have all this info. However, uh, the true value challenge lies in determining all the actual and tangible benefits this visibility bring in each step of the supply chain. Uh, for instance, if I receive real-time geoposition of product during that transportation, I can optimize my inbound outbound process and overall yard management system. Uh, thanks to the estimated time of arrival, I can increase my productivity with improved lean and just in time process and therefore reduce my stock inventory, which leads to inevitably higher uh, financial liquidities. So uh, by supporting companies in this process, we actually make them realize it's a 360 degrees game changer for the overall business. And I guess if your goods are stuck yeah. on a ship in the middle of the Suez Canal, at least you can send messages to each other, send notifications on how your products are doing. This sounds really quite complicated, Nadim, connecting the network to the 5G system. How do you, in practice, connect your supply chain to 5G? Thanks for the question, David. I think it goes to perhaps why 5G is gaining momentum now, at least one of the reasons why, and that's around dedicated networks or private 5G networks. Depending on where the organization's facilities are located and the maturity of their country-specific licensing regulations, things can get really interesting when we look into the area of private 5G networks, where the spectrum and hence the network is owned by an enterprise or an institution and can be restricted to a certain area. These networks are enablers for companies to drive their digitalization and decisively improve database business models because they help enable the platforms and services that the enterprises purchase, but just as importantly, give enterprises time critical production control and data supported real time decision making. Private 5G changes the game because these private networks can locally improve upon public network offerings and services, whether that's through network slicing and traffic prioritization or even just simply connectivity where fixed access is not available or Wi-Fi is not viable, perhaps within a larger campus size area or an expansive logistics environment. So these dedicated networks will continue to bring connectivity to beyond where the campus wireless land ends, but also fulfill the technical requirements an organization would have around improved performance and company control or security. And then also the commercial requirements around lowering airtime spend 
and coverage deployment costs because within a private network, the airtime is unlimited and usage generated from the network comes at no extra cost. So we found these requirements usually lead to some interesting use cases across secure facilities and manufacturing plants in the supply chain realm of the business, especially when you think of large campus-wide environments to enable more widespread coverage and connectivity across a plethora of devices transmitting large amounts of data that needs to be secure and under control. So it sounds like 5G is a real game changer compared with 4G for all sorts of businesses, but what does it mean inside the organization? How can a company improve its operation with 5G. Wolfgang, have you seen any compelling examples? Yeah, we have, we have of course, seen some examples. Uh, we spoke already about the shop floor and logistics, uh, but with respect of the high bandwidth and the opportunities and, we, we, and the latency we have, we have other opportunities or other options. It, it, it really turns to new opportunities on the market, but also new business models. Let's have a look a little bit about my service and my maintenance. Uh, maybe I'm working remote. I have a plant in, in Japan and one in Germany. So why, why sending around the service technicians around the world to solve an, an issue? No, we can use in the moment, we can use the camera, we can use the capabilities of 8G or 8K or 4K cameras to have a remote specialist team. The specialist team supports local, the local uh, technicians and helping them to solve the issue. He can walk through the machine with his VR camera glasses on, and I can give him direct access, direct information from my headquarter, from my specialist teams. So same with construction. Yeah, I can really have a virtual plant, which is not constructed yet, but I can walk through that and can, can imagine where is the best line feeding, where is the best uh, assembly plant line, and how can I build it up? And finally, I can do remote, control. So my, my example is always a mining company sitting somewhere in, 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 in the no man's land and I can operate that from the, from the headquarters and can operate and can uh, use the excavators and the trucks to, to handle them. Ah, but Wolfgang, what if the bad guys try and access your network so they can <laughs> set your trucks mining without you controlling it? What about the security risks? Because with every technology there are bad guys trying to gain access. I mean, Nadim, what should we be thinking about in order to secure these networks? Thanks again, David. It's a great question and, and goes towards the, addressing the larger story or context of 5G. So if you put 5G and the performance improvements into context within areas like IoT and AI, 5G allows businesses to derive that real value from all the billions of connected devices, communicating, leveraging intelligence, delivering new insight and optimizing decision-making. You think of the modern IoT uh, and AI driven applications, they'll need to download large amounts of data as fast as possible for effective prediction and automation in near real time. So 5G can be a catalyst for this new paradigm of computing to support new data demands across core to edge to cloud, extracting true value of the data generated across the chain. But your question is spot on, you know, what about protecting all that data? At Entity Limited, our services business has been developing a secure access service edge or SASE framework focused on the edge to cloud network fabric. So think about addressing mobile and fixed access to the cloud, the network edge, the customer edge, and edge compute platform, if you will, as well as secure on-premise connectivity for those organizations, not 100% on the cloud. Our goal is to provide an end-to-end -end seamless software-defined management layer that adds functionality and flexibility to enable domestic and global expansion, but do so safely and securely. For the IT department, this addresses zero trust, location-free, flexible work styles, such as work from home. For the line of business, this addresses 5G access to support new needs of IoT applications by linking edge and cloud with functions such as image, image analysis and data processing, just as examples. And finally, we're also delivering device management and control, whether that's across the IoT platform, SaaS platforms like O365, or multi-cloud applications, or even applications in the good old data center. Thank you, Nadine, for looking after us. I feel a lot better knowing we can trust you to maintain secure networks. Um, I feel we've just skimmed the surface of what NTT and SAP working together can do to help organizations build connected supply chains. Um, we don't have time to go into much more detail because there's tons more I want to ask, but I just have to say thank you, Roman, Nadine, and Wolfgang for sharing this story at Sapphire Now. And thank you, everybody who's joined us to explore some of these big issues. Stay safe. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.